welcome to episode 164, the final episode of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. This week, I want to start with the concept of death. I read a dire warning that our country is dying from within. It was meant to create fear of change and a hasty retreat to the ways of old and the leaders of old thinking. But let's get into what death might actually mean. I have noticed that any time that I'm really struggling in life, really dealing with something that stretches my abilities to endure, I have a voice in my head that tells me that I might be dying. It feels like I'm dying. Of course, the first thought I have is that I might actually be leaving this earth. So I have to figure out if I'm ready for that. But the second and more important thought is that there may be some part of me that is dying. And if it is dying, it may be doing so by design. Maybe a part of me that has carried me to this point is no longer needed. Maybe that part is now impeding my forward movement. Maybe that part of me needs to die. There is no rebirth without death. As with all things, the personal translates to the world at large. There is a feeling that the rebirth brings up in us that makes it seem like something is dying. That is correct. It is dying. Some of the thought patterns and institutions that brought us to this point in the development of this school, planet Earth, are now holding us back from our own forward progress. They only serve now to plaster in place the structures of power that have always existed. They solidify the power of racism and misogyny and the few having power over the many. We have attached our personal identities to those structures and thought patterns. And now we are shifting. We are now transitioning to a higher level of thinking and behaving. There is no growth without pain and confusion. And there is no growth without the death of what is holding us back. For me, the foreboding feelings of imminent death have always been followed by huge breakthroughs in my life. They have always been the precursor to growth. I have learned that The feeling that I am dying is something to be welcomed. It means that I will be reborn. It means that I am leveling up. I feel the same way for our country and the world. I'm going to take it as a very good sign that it feels like we are dying because the rebirth will be magnificent. If you look at the anger and hatred radiating off of some people, you can see that they are not going to be part of the gene pool moving forward. They are simply incapable of growth and will leave here lonely, miserable, and unchanged. The level of human expansion in the world right now cannot include everyone. Those who are unable to adapt to an environment that asks them to increase their honesty, integrity, empathy, and humility will peel off and be left out of a world that is moving forward. Know that you are here for the growth and anything that stands in the way of that will need to be shed. I have talked a lot about the system that we live in. It is a system that has natural laws 
and predictable outcomes. We understand some of it through what we know of as science, but it is safe to say that there is much more that we have yet to figure out. The rules on how this place work are not to be taken personally. It is our responsibility to understand the system as it has been constructed. Some express their problems with the system by asking things like, what kind of God would allow children to die? What kind of God would allow an earthquake to happen? What kind of God allows people to murder, rape, and rob other people? All of these questions presuppose that we are here to live in a protective bubble provided for us by our Creator. It imagines that we should never have to go through anything difficult. We want the answers to the tests in advance. We would prefer that things not challenge us and that nothing ever defeat us. And if we are being completely honest, we would have to admit that we are never going to feel like anyone should have died when they did. We want our Creator to control the actions of others and spend the rest of the time just making conditions as easy as they can be for us. So what would the point of being here even be? We are not dolls in an elaborate dollhouse that our Creator is playing with. We have chosen to come to this school to learn the lessons that will make us complete souls. In doing so, we will have to have all the experiences that lead to that level of understanding. Much of what we will learn will be difficult. We are meant to struggle and then enjoy the fruits of our struggles. We live on a planet that is controlled by natural laws. Those laws employ fires and floods and the natural elements in a way that perpetuates the survival of the planet. Part of the process of nature is that things must die and be destroyed to make way for the new. It's not personal. The body you're housed in is a complicated system that is meant to break down and stop working at some point. Your body will participate in the lessons it can offer and then it will be done. It's not personal. Human behavior and interactions are subject to natural laws. If you are cruel to someone, they will feel repelled by you or drawn to you if that is a lesson they are learning. If you lie, cheat, and steal, people probably won't trust you. It's not really complicated or unpredictable. Just as surely as you will struggle with the human frailties that are laid out in the seven deadly sins, other people will react to your choices in a way that makes sense for them, even if it is not what you would wish for. You make your choices and the world around you decides the consequences. Everyone will feel slighted and hurt at some point, Everyone will make mistakes and hope to be forgiven. Everyone will struggle to forgive after they are wronged. People feel the need to be seen and understood. People will do whatever they think will bring them love, respect, and or security. You happen to be in the system that was designed by our Creator. You were given skills likes and dislikes, and most importantly, free will. You also were given the gift of intuition and the ever-present wisdom of your guides and ancestors. You chose a cast of characters who you determined would be crucial to learning the lessons you're here to learn before returning home. You were given a mind 
that has some basic wiring along with malleability that allows you to refine your thinking to optimize your outcomes. You were given the free will to make choices that can either move you forward in the quest for understanding, or you can use your free will to make the choices that will destroy you. Your creator can't wait to see what you do with all the power you have been given. The rebirth is in full swing and it will continue to be long after you leave here. It is a huge process, but your participation in that process is critical to the outcome. You are that powerful. At times it will seem very dark and some might feel that it is irresponsible in these difficult times to turn our heads away from the darkness. There is no force that wants you to fixate on the darkness more than the darkness itself. To continue to stare and wallow in everything dark right now is a dangerous thing. Too much darkness brings about despair, which is a tool that the darkness uses to disempower you. We need to learn to defend ourselves and understand that darkness moves to turn despair into misery, which will keep us in its grip. As much as you might like to fight all the battles that the darkness has put before us, these are not all your battles to fight. You are not alone in the battle. Trust that others are doing their part too. What are your go-to sources of light? What can you do to remember in every moment when this is needed, what will pull you out of the gloom and back into that which we are fighting for? In these times, we cannot just allow ourselves to be dragged from one disastrous news story to the next without having a strategy for coming to the surface for air. Darkness and the despondency it brings are forces that can make you feel weaker. They make you fold in on yourself and want to vanish. You are made to feel that it is all more than you can bear. This becomes paralyzing, which is how the darkness wants you to feel. The darkness does not want you in your full power because you are bringing the opposition, the light. In all things, there must be opposition. So fight by always having a way out, a way to refuel and keep the fight up for the duration of this marathon. Time spent on developing your own spiritual bubble wrap is time well spent. You will need to figure out what it takes to make you feel safe, make you feel protected from the darkness, and what brings you joy. You need to figure out how to retrain your focus at times to all that makes life wonderful and all that you are grateful for. There is so much light. There is so much wonder. There is so much love to be experienced. All of that is meant for you. It is the force that will transform this planet and you are a much needed conduit. You will raise the spiritual awareness level of the planet with your connection to the light. You are just that powerful. Remember how magnificent you are. And no matter what the world throws at you, you are actually a glorified being spending some time in a weak little human body. I can't thank you enough for the time you have spent engaging with the content of this podcast. 
It has been my supreme privilege to do this project and to know that there are so many people out there all around the world who are working for a planet that is transforming into a higher form of life. You came here to do the hard work and you have not given up. You are using your power in a most beautiful way. Thank you. All episodes of Rebirth Revolution will continue to be found on the podcast apps, the music apps, and full episodes are available on our YouTube and Facebook pages. Come back anytime for a refresher and bring your friends. Remember, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet, not one ounce more or one ounce less. Stay strong and safe and in the light.